Hey, no broken legs this trip. I think they all stayed inside this weekend and talked about skiing. Too cold to ski. Yeah, it's colder up here than it's ever been. Conductor to engine 3011. Highball, Holly. All right, Jim. All aboard. Let's get going. Never get used to it, Ben. Never get tired of it. I agree. I agree. Now, how's a fella supposed to retire and say goodbye to that country? Did I tell you I was going to retire? Uh, yeah, yes, you did, Ollie. Did you know I was 65? Uh, yeah, yes, I did, Ollie. 65 tomorrow. this weekend. Oh? Yeah, I really like your style. You look great. Well, thank you very much. I like the way you ski, too. <laughs> My name is Les Reaver. What's your phone number? Hi. You will hardly give a lady a chance to catch her breath. Well, it's only a one-hour train ride. Hey, can I get you another drink? Les Reaver. I appreciate your interest. Oh, it's more than interest. It's, it's desire, passion. Your name is, um... Ellen Staffo. Mrs. Mr. Staffo is standing over there at the bar. And I guess that's the end of that. It's too bad. What am I missing? Well, we were gonna be great lovers, you and I. 
We would have uh, gone to Monaco, where I'd have made a killing at the tables. But lived in Capri. And all on my credit cards, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hope I didn't spoil your day. No, I feel lucky. Jack, too much. The way you came down those slopes. <laughs> Who was that? Did you see my fall? Nobody. Both of them. I couldn't get you. Have you thought of what we're going to say to him? What? What are we going to say to the kids? <laughs> Your mom and dad love you, but they can't stand each other. So they're getting a divorce. Please choose up sides. Look, I could be glib, too. But in an hour, we're gonna face it. Now, what are you gonna say to me? I can't think now. I'm on Capri. Join the session. You want the music department, not history. Hey, Mr. Dunn, sweater's dynamite. I love it. My wife made it for me. It's very sexy. I mean, for a professor. Here. Now, how come nobody's studying the Hundred Years' War, huh? Super weekend. Carol, you, uh, you promised you wouldn't single me out like that. Why don't you go and join the others? I love you. Oh. Don't do that. You think they can read your lips? Please don't. I just need to know how you feel about me. I really need to. Go ahead. They can't read your lips. I'll call you when I can. Hey, Bob. Mark. Now. my ticket. Conductor? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, come on. Give me a break, huh? What's wrong? Oh, you're with that group over there, aren't you? You want to take it short. Oh, it's, it's mine. I didn't buy one. <laughs> That'll be six even. You can ride for free. Come on, man, you gotta use your head. What's the railroad to you, a friend? Take No, thanks. Take! I could stay on the last 70, you know. 
then I'd lose that supplemental pension. An incentive, they call it, to retire at 65. Now, you know Bill Travers. He and I have been engineers for almost 40 years. He's planning on retiring next month and buying himself a farm. Wants me to go in partners with him on it. What do you think? Flashing yellow. Flashing yellow. Listen. Listen to that engine. I've been riding this engine for over 10 years, and I've learned its language. Bill Travis, now, he can't wait to make his last run on that brand new engine we got. You seen it? No. It's got a lot more power. And I'll bet it's a lot quieter, too. Of course, that's the trouble. I don't talk to you. What's she saying to you now, Holly? Mm, right now, Saying the tracks are icy. And I'm gonna break her just a mite. Ah, ten pounds of air doesn't even slow us at all. I'll give her ten more. Hang on. I won't stop the train. train to dispatcher. Go ahead, ski special. Dick, this is Holly. I'm having trouble with my brakes. No air going through the brake line. I can't reach the conductor, so I'm sending my fireman back. Okay, Holly, we copy. We'll try the emergency brakes in the coaches. If that doesn't work, we'll try the handbrake. And if that doesn't work, by God, we got us a runaway coming off of this mountain. I got you, Holly. Dispatch it to the work train. If you still have any equipment on the main line, get it off now. We still got some turning to do out of the law. Just get it off now.
six bucks. Call it a favor. I don't accept favors. I don't need them. What do you need? Just me. Good for you. Watch it. I'm sorry. Look, I'm sorry. Sorry. So don't say it. Dad, I just couldn't do it. I understand. You don't. I know you do. I do understand. Makes me worry about you, that's all. All last summer, we talked about climbing that mountain. When we got there. And I got scared. Scared, I admit it. And yesterday, I was scared to ski with you, too. I just looked down that slope and I couldn't do it. And I don't want to, Dad. I'm sorry. Look, I know about fear. You think I don't? Fear is something that comes up every day. Sometimes it's a decision at work. Sometimes it's a person trying to hassle you. And sometimes it's a mountain. Whatever it is, you have to face it and beat it. Dad. Some people are, are scared to go out on a stage and face an audience. I'm not. With you, everything is fantasy. Plays you do at school, the things you talk about. This is real. Out there, that's what you have to be. Mark, I'm not mad at you. I'm not. I just want to try and help you. Keep talking to us. What do we got? Ski train, no brakes. That's a 3% grade all the way down. Who's on it? Uh, Holly Gibson with a crew of four. 214 passengers. start off by telling him why we went away this week to think it over and we thought it over and the marriage is thereby canceled revoked nullified mommy and daddy don't give a damn anymore except about their children well you're not very much help are finally facing facts. It's over between them, so they want to end it now and say goodbye. Don't we? End it now and say goodbye. Romance has grown old and passed away. Uh, romance? Well, oh, what do you want to call it? What? Dear kids, your father and I are now arguing about what it is we're always arguing about. I say it's we don't love each other anymore. And he says... He says... Doesn't look like either one of us have much left. Nothing to give. I guess it's saying what you're saying. Dear kids, your father and I finally agree on one thing. Divorce.
the emergency. <laughs> Here's to nothing. Herb, we got no brakes, no air pressure. We just turned out the emergency. No brakes? I've always got an idea. We're going to try the hand brakes, but we've got to work fast. What'd you say? Gentlemen, we're going to need your help. Well, come on, show us what to do. We've got a problem, but we're going to take care of it. I'll be right back. They need me to work a handbrake. They gotta stop the train. Why? I don't know. What's going on? What's happening? It'll be okay. Be coming through, please. There was a handbrake like this in the front of every car. We're listening for the signal. The train whistles. And when the engineer blows it, he'll also release a load of sand on the track. And that's when we start pumping. Up and down. Hard as you can. Okay, up ahead. What if this doesn't work? I said, what if this doesn't work? At this speed, we go off someplace. Derail. Come on. <laughs> Remember what to do when you hear the whistle. Yeah. You're about ready. Give him one more minute to get set, will you, Holly? Okay. Okay. What happened? Herb, you gotta put the emergency to her. We did, Ben. He burned it out. Now we gotta try the handbrake. Oh, dear God. try now there's not much well, something there has to be something probably ice in the brake pipe well i gotta get back what does that mean a clog of ice holding back the air pressure it might melt as we go down the mountain it's a chance what else the brake pipes got angle cocks on every car maybe one of them's closed blocking off the air maybe i checked them before we started they were open let's check them again on a moving train and there's ice out there i'm willing to risk it how about you well, you can't do it alone. Check the angle 
Wilcock. You hold on to me. Don't slip. Frank. place is on the floor. The engineer will radio me when we approach a curve, and I'll tell you and all the people in the other cars. Now, it might just be that the engine will go off, and we'll uncouple and stay on the tracks. We have a very good chance of coming through this without anybody getting hurt. So let's go to work. You track all the way home. Appreciate that, Dick. But you won't make it past the curb at Arvada. What's your speed? 55. And you know something, Dick? We might just ride that curb. Not at 55, you won't. Now, Holly, Bob is getting ambulances and fire equipment out to that curve. Now, we put you there in eight minutes. You girls help the man get all the glasses and bottles down off the bar. Anything that might fly around in here in case we derail. And you, can you help me pull the shades down over these windows? We've got to keep the glass from coming out. You pull the shades. What? It's your train. Now, look, mister, I need your help. We could go off this track at any minute, right? Right, so? No, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to make it. You run around and pull the shades, not me. since I was eight years old. Fifty-seven years, Ben. Fifty-seven years. When I was a kid, we lived on a farm. My dad had an old white workhorse. I used to ride that old white horse down the trackside every day. Every time a train would come by, that old horse would stampede and try to run off. He never did get used to that train. But I did. I've always been crazy about railroads. 
Clay, don't you know what's going on here? Don't you know what's going to happen to us? Well, don't you care? room, kid. Look, go back to your seat. Grab your coat or anything else soft and put it around you. I've never been in a train crash before either. So what? You still got to use your head. You got to use your instincts. You got to land on your feet. Remember now, everybody stay flat on the floor. Four minutes, so get ready. everybody. So grab hold and brace yourselves.
told you we've read it. Now what? Come on, what's in front of us? Holly, how did you ever stay on that track at 55 miles an hour? It was 62, Bob, and I guess we're coming all the way home. Yeah, I'm afraid you are, Holly. There's nothing to stop you. Nothing between you and us. Yeah, Bob. Next stop. Jackson City Station. Lord help us. Holly. Yeah, Bob. Holly, uh, we're evacuating the station. The uh, fire trucks and ambulances will be standing by. Look, Holly, is there any chance of your locating the problem? I figure it's eyes from the line, Bob. Temperatures are lower up here than they've ever been. But it might be a closed angle cock. I got my brakeman checking it now. Well, good luck to you. Appreciate that, Bob. Attention, please. Attention. We have a runaway train heading toward the station on this dead-end track. Please evacuate this area immediately. All passengers and all personnel must evacuate this area immediately. Whose idea was it to go away to the mountains for the weekend? Yours. I wanted to go to the beach, remember? The one good idea, the right idea you had in your life, and I wouldn't listen. <laughs> now listen, everybody. There's nothing ahead of us now but the station at Jackson City. And that's a dead end. We hope we can stop the train before we get there. But if we can't, that's where we're going to hit. Now, if you get ready, brace yourselves, we've got a chance. So stay on the floor and protect yourselves. What a way to finish our weekend. What a way to finish. No, no, I don't want it to finish. Not for us like this. I don't either. I take it all back. Stop the trap. Hey, where's the brakeman? He's dead. He fell under the train. The angle cocks are all open. I guess he was right. There must be ice in the lines. Now, we've got one chance, one chance to beat this thing, and we're going to take it. Look, there's nothing we can do. Look, the kid will be safe here. Safe? This train's going to crash, buddy. Well, we don't have to ride on it. You're crazy. If we can get far enough away from the car, we'll be all right. You're crazy. This train's 
traveling over 70 miles an hour, you'll never survive the jump. It's a chance. It's no chance. It's suicide. I'm not letting you do it. Now stop it. Get away from me. What about the boy? What about his life? All right, Mark, listen to me. We can't let this thing beat us. We can't. We have to do it together. This time, you have to go with me. You have to. Then the baggage room. But what's beyond it? Waiting room. We'll clear everybody on there now. Where do you want my people? In the street with the fire equipment. Back over here. Marsh and Jack and I fall over this place. No telling. What was his name? 
Herb. Herb Elcott. Did he have a family? He had a wife. Eighteen minutes. I was thinking if we could just maybe jot something down to the kids. Just you put something on the paper and, and in case, you know, then you can put the note in your purse and they'd probably find it. What do you think? I think that's good. The only thing is I haven't written a word. I just keep thinking about you know, the time I yelled at him. And then time I uh, spanked Jason, <laughs> which was, what, 12? 12 years ago. I want to tell him I'm sorry. I don't know. I, 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 we can just tell them we love them. There, yeah, look, here we are. Again, eh? Wondering what shall we say to the kids. You all right? Yeah, here, let's put this against the seat, okay?
but we have a chance to make it if we get back inside there. You go! You wanna die? Yes! Listen, a guy just got killed trying to stop this train. What do you wanna do, just throw it all away? What difference does it make? We're all going to die! All right, if you believe that, come on, come on, come on, back with me inside there. No, I won't wanna be alone with it. With what? Give me some money. Please leave me alone. I want to be alone. Like you, I don't need anybody either. Listen, hey, I, I know I said that, but... Well, I say a lot of things, you know. I, I'm good at talking, but I don't always know what, what it means. I don't know. Hey, yeah, just kind of say it to get me through. Hey, listen, listen, listen. There were people on this train who really needed me. I helped them. Do you understand? I really did. I helped him. And that's important. I don't want to be helped. So go away. I want to stay with you. How much time we got, Holly? Holly, what are you thinking about? Horses. Blind horses. What? Horses, Ben. Horses. Bob, are you there? Yes, Holly? That brand new engine we got, the one Travers been waiting for, what's the horsepower on that thing? It's 3,500. My God, Holly, I know what you're thinking. That thing ready to roll yet? Unit 3,081, and I mean this minute. Dispatcher to Yardmaster, is track 19 cleared out of the yard? 3,081, it has to be ready. If she can catch us, she can stop us. Hey, is Bill Travers around? Put old Bill on her. If anybody can catch us, he can. You think he can catch us, Holly? Well, I don't know, but I figure we'll chance it. Right. It's all clear, Bob. The unit will clear the yard in four minutes. That'll give them another four minutes to get into position. We'll put the new engine on this siding. When the ski train passes, this engine will come out onto the main track and chase it. It'll try to catch it, couple onto the last car and apply the brakes before the ski train hits the station. Piling in on our wreck. Tell him that. Right. You remember Bill Travers, Ben? He's the one buying that farm. I still haven't made up my mind to be his partner yet. What do you think? You know, when I saw you, I knew you were gonna give me trouble. You know, I just I just knew you were gonna drive me crazy. First, you, you pay my way, and then... Wait, wait, wait a minute, please! Please, I won't come any closer, I promise. Hey, you know what? We can decide. We can decide not to die. You know how? We'll make a date tonight. I would like to take you out to dinner tonight. 8 o'clock, or 7.30. Boy, I'll pick you up. Oh, no, wait a minute. Boy, I'll, uh, I'll meet you there. Hey, if we make a date, we can't die, right? Answer me. What's your name? Please, what's your name? And we should be seeing him any second now, Bill. Yeah. But we'll hear him first. <laughs>
We're just a Nick, few. Uh, put your names down. Dear Laura and Jason, we're just a few minutes from the station. And we know what's going to happen. We love you so much. And that... It helps. It uh, helps us. Yeah. Nine minutes. Nine minutes. Hold on to something. And that helps us now. It really does. Jason, I'm sorry I got mad about the fender. <laughs> and I'm sorry, fathers and sons, to stop hugging each other. We'd like to hug you both right now. Laura, Mom, forgot to tell you lately, the dance is beautiful. <laughs> we love you. We love each other. Can we love each other? Yeah. yeah. We both sorry. Hmm? Roger, dispatcher. Five minutes. We're going to clear the area. It's like falling. It's like what? It's like falling through space. It's the same thing, only it's taking longer. We have time to think about it. Hey, we're not falling. We're, we're falling through space. I don't want to think anymore. Hey, wait, don't! Please, please, don't! Here we are, date, date, remember? 7.30? Why? Because. Because. Because I don't want to eat alone tonight. Because I want you to be there. Because I want to know your name. Because I, I want to see you laugh. Hey, I want to take you to Giorgio's Cafe. Giorgio's Cafe has a singing waiter. Well, it's Giorgio, really, and, and, he, and he's also the cook. He's a terrible singer. He's rotten, but he's a great cook and one of the last of the singing waiters. What do you say? I really want to know you. Please, I really want to know your name.
Junction. I'm coming in and he can't catch me. So call him off, you hear? Holly? Bob, call him off. Travers, he's too close to the station. Give it up. Travers, apply your brakes, do you hear me?
been thinking about that farm of yours. Wish you a lot of luck on it. I believe I'll stick around for another five. I've definitely made up my mind. So you take it easy and take care of yourself. See you. Well, that's fantastic. In fact, that's just beautiful. Hey, I'd like you to meet Carol. Her name is Carol. Hello, Carol. Hello. Oh, Carol, that's great. I love it. Hi. It's sure is good to see you. Well, it's good to see you, Joe. Say, let me borrow that radio a minute. This is the engineer on the ski train to the dispatcher. I stopped a little bit short of my spot, and I'm 23 minutes ahead of schedule. How do you like that for making time? Thank you, Joel. Be seated. From the mountains to the ranches we go on five. Yes, it's back to the days of Ewing Mania for the spin-off of the 80s soap opera Dallas. I remember how it was the one show I was allowed to stay up for, Wednesdays at 8. Still remember it now. But right now, times have changed, though not the rivalry as Sue Ellen teams up with Bobby and once again JR's life's under threat. Dallas War of the Ewings is next.